Today I'll show you how I automate mouse clicks on my Mac. Doing this saves me literally hundreds of hours a year since it helps automate the tedious and boring tasks in my job. In this video, I'll walk you through three different techniques to control the mouse so you can automate your work too, starting with a method to record your mouse clicks. So let me show you a task that I want to automate. Now you can apply these same techniques of automating the mouse to any task that you want, but I'm just going to use this as an example. So the task that I want to perform is to export my passwords from Bitwarden. So uh, Bitwarden is a password manager and it has this little extension icon in my browser. And what I want to do is a sequence of mouse clicks that looks like this. So the first thing I want to do is open the extension and then click settings, and then vault options, and then export vault. And then I want to change this to be a CSV, and then click export vault. So this is something I do every single week to make a backup of my passwords. And as you can see, it was several mouse clicks, which can be pretty tedious. So let's try to automate this by using the record feature within Keyboard Maestro. So Keyboard Maestro is the app that we'll use to automate these mouse clicks. It's super easy and simple to use. We'll start by making a new macro and I'll call this uh, method one, record mouse clicks. And then what we can do from here is press this record button at the bottom. So as you can see, this started a countdown timer from five seconds. And now anything I do, if I click the mouse, if I type keystrokes, those will all be added as actions to this macro. So you can see as I'm clicking, um, it's recording those actions directly into the macro. And then we can play them back afterwards by running the macro. So I'm going to delete these and I'll record again so that we can do those sequence of mouse clicks within the browser to export Bitwarden. So let me press record. And now let's open the browser. So I'll come to the browser and now I'll do those mouse clicks. So I'll click up here, then I'll click settings and then vault options and then export vault. And then I'll change this to be a CSV instead of a JSON and I'll press export vault. That's the whole process. And now we can press pause on this action here and come back to Keyboard Maestro. And then I'll press record again to finish that recording. And now within the macro, as you can see, there are several different mouse click actions. And actually the first thing we did was open the browser, which we can delete since we don't even need that action. But each of these has their own coordinate point. And if I press go, you can see it jumps the mouse to the point that it's going to click the mouse. So this is a good way to uh, preview where each of those clicks is. So the third click, it's actually clicking relative to the front window's top left corner, which in this case is this Bitwarden window. So that's why it's jumping it over to here. But we can preview um, this macro. We can try to run it and see what it does within the Bitwarden uh, application. Okay, so the next thing we'll need to do is add a some sort of keyboard shortcut or some way to run these actions. So I'll press new trigger and I'll add a hotkey of command option control S. So you could set this to whatever you want, but this is one that I like to use to test macros. And then let's come back to the browser and I'll press that shortcut. So command option control S. It clicks Bitwarden and then as you can see it clicks a bunch of random stuff on screen. It looks like it messed up. And the reason for that is that it's trying to click each of these actions one after the other with no delay. But as you can see, when we click on something like this, it takes a second for the window to load. So let's fix this by adding a delay between each of these mouse clicks. So I'll search for the delay action. So set action delay. This will add a new action and we can set uh, time between actions for this macro to maybe 0.2 seconds. So what that will do is it will add a 0.2 second delay between each of these mouse clicks below. And now let's try it again. So I'll press that shortcut command option control S. 
And this time it worked. So as you saw, it clicked each of those buttons that we had set it to click, and it ran through that whole sequence of actions in less than a second, which is pretty uh, amazing considering that it was a pretty tedious process before. So this was method one of automating the mouse on our Macs. And by the way, if you want me to personally help you make custom macros like this to save you over 100 hours a year, I run a program called the Automation Accelerator. It's extremely personalized to help you save as much time as possible, and you can sign up for a free coaching call with me using the top link in the description below to see if you'd be a good fit. But now let's turn to the second method of automating mouse clicks on our Mac. So I'll make a new macro here and I'll call this method two, click the mouse action. So method one is great when you're first getting started with Keyboard Maestro and macros because you just have to press the record button and then literally perform the sequences of mouse clicks that you want to automate. However, it doesn't allow you to get super customized while you're building the macro. So let's look at a more customized way to automate mouse clicks. So the second method will involve adding an action to click the mouse. So if we search for click the mouse, it will be this action here, move or click mouse. And we can turn to this method before getting to the third one, which is actually an even more reliable way. Okay, so the first method was pretty cool in that it added all of these actions to click the mouse at different coordinates. However, let me show you a problem with it. So if you'll notice, each of these actions says that it will click at a certain coordinate point relative to the front window's top left corner. So what that means is that it will click relative to the top left corner of the screen. So a certain number of pixels to the right and a certain number of pixels down. So it would click somewhere like this uh, relative to the top left corner if it were trying to click this button here. However, if we change the dimensions of our window, so maybe if we did something like this, and then we try to run the macro, you can see it's clicking all over the place, but it's not clicking in the right places uh, within the browser. And that's because the top left corner of the window has changed position. So, you know, while the record action is good to get started with, it's not the most reliable. This is where uh, method number two comes in. So by adding an action like this manually, we can actually change these parameters, have the mouse click relative to a different corner of the screen. So since this uh, extension option is pretty constant relative to the top right corner of the screen, you can see as I'm changing the top right corner of the screen, this icon stays in the same position relative to the top right corner it changes position relative to the top left of the screen. As you can see, it gets closer or farther away, but it stays constant relative to the top right of the screen. So let's change this action to click relative to the top right corner. And then what we can do is press the get button, which will start the timer again, and we can do this process for each of the mouse clicks. So I'll press get. And I came back to the browser and moved the mouse over um, the Bitwarden extension. And then it brought us automatically back to Keyboard Maestro and added these coordinates in. So let's add another trigger to this one. Maybe we can do um, the same one and I'll disable this old macro um, so that it will not trigger the old one. It will only trigger the new macro. And let me press it. You can see it clicks that button up top. And if I change the dimensions of the window, it still clicks in the right place because it's clicking relative to this corner instead of this one. So now let's repeat this process. I'm going to duplicate this action by holding Option on the keyboard. And then let's get the next uh, button that we needed. So like this. So let's duplicate this action. I'm doing this by holding Option on the keyboard while I drag. And then let's get the next button that we needed. So it was the settings button down here that we needed to click on. The next one is vault option. So let me repeat this process. And then after we click on vault options, we'll need to get the next one, which was export vault. And then finally, or I think we have a couple more. 
was the JSON one, and then the CSV. So you can see we can quickly get through a number of mouse clicks just by going through this process. And I'll also copy and paste the delay action from before so that we have a slight delay between each of these mouse clicks. But now let's uh, back out of here and try to run this macro. Perfect, so it gets us to the right place. And in fact, we could add one more at the bottom to click that export vault button. Okay, and let's try that one more time and see what it does. So I'll run the macro, it clicks export vault and works perfectly. Now the real test here will be whether it works if we change the size of the window. So let's try it like this. And, um, oh, it looks like it did work, but we were in the wrong window. So let's back out of there and try it again. Okay, perfect. So it's working and you can see that this second method is a lot more reliable than the first because now it works when the size of the window is different. By the way, you can download all of the macros that I'll show in this video in the description below if you want to try them yourself. But now let's turn to the third method, which will be the most reliable of the three. So I'll create a new macro and call it method three. Um, this one will be click at found image. So whereas before we clicked at a coordinate point on the screen, we can actually click at an image instead. So I'm going to add a new hotkey trigger. And the action that we'll search for is this one here, click at found image. So I'll double click to add it. And now we can put screenshots of images on screen. And this action will click on them regardless of their position. So let's come back to the browser. And maybe we can have it click on the settings image first. So there's actually a shortcut command shift Y to open this Bitwarden extension. So let's do that. Let's add an action to type a keystroke. So type a keystroke and I'll type command shift Y and move this up. So it will type command shift Y to open the extension. We don't even need to use a mouse click, but then we'll want to um, take a screenshot of the settings window right here. And then we can come and paste it into this action. So I press command control shift four, that will save an image to the clipboard instead of to a file. And then I just came and press command V to paste it in. And one uh, setting that's useful to change for this action is to change it from unique to best. This will try to click on the best image it finds on the screen. So if there's more than one uh, image that looks similar, it'll just click on the one that it thinks is the most accurate. And then we can also change this to wait for the image. So instead of adding a pause between each of the actions, we can just have it wait until the image appears on the screen in the first place. So let's try this out. I know it's only two actions, but I'll run the hotkey and you can see it opens the extension and immediately clicks the settings button as soon as it appears. Now the next thing we'll need to do is click this uh, vault options button. So let's duplicate the action within Keyboard Maestro and paste it in. Oh, I think I did the wrong uh, shortcut there and I'll paste it in and then let's duplicate it again. The next one we'll need to click is export vault. By the way, if you hold shift, on the keyboard, you can move around the screenshot window while you're taking screenshots. Um, export vault. And then the next one is to click this. And I'll paste that in. And then the next one is to click the CSV icon. And then we have one more, which is to click export vault. So this time, as you can see, we are only clicking on images. We're not clicking on coordinates. The, so this macro will work regardless of where these images, where the buttons appear on the screen. So let's uh, back out and run the macro. I'll press the shortcut and it quickly goes through that entire process and gets us to the appropriate window. Now let's try it again while changing the screen 
and this time it works as well. So this is the most reliable of the three methods, at least in this case, assuming that Bitwarden doesn't update and change these icons so that the underlying images don't change. But this has been a brief introduction into how to automate the mouse on your Mac. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this one next, where I go into way more depth about how to automate the mouse on your Mac. Thanks for watching.